Welcome to the line. As we sat down to tape this week, lawmakers were wrapping up a 30 day legislative session in Santa Fe and we'll discuss some of the highlights from this year's session. But first, producer Sarah Gustavus went to the roundhouse last week to look at transparency bills. She spoke with Senators Sandra Rue and Jeff Steinborn. Senator Rue, thanks for sitting down with us. It's a 30 day session. There's not much time. Why introduce bills on transparency this year? Well, because I think transparency is something that we should always be paying attention to and cognizant of. And um, these bills that I have this year uh, are dealing with some deficiencies, some things that should have been done in the past, and I, I have a sense of urgency that these things should be addressed. And oftentimes with legislation, you come to realize that you will introduce something like this, and you may not be successful the first year, but you bring it back the next session, and oftentimes then you, know, you will have better success. So um, if nothing else, I wanted to start this process with these bills, and, and I do hope that we can get them done this session. Senator, you're drawing attention again this year to issues with the state sunshine portal. What concerns you? Well, what we're trying to do is we can, we can utilize technology to allow the public to be more engaged in this process. When it comes to like the sunshine portal, it, the, the information about state government is in there, how we're spending their money. And, and a lot of other things are in there, but there was supposed to be a tutorial component to that. So the public can go in there and educate themselves as to what it is they're looking at. Okay, you're in a budget tab. The whole point is to allow the public to get more engaged in this process, to contact their legislators and have conversations with them based on what they were able to learn uh, through these transparency websites. And uh, uh, arguably that probably hasn't been done as well as it should have been. But the whole point of this is to allow taxpayers access to information that is, should be, is theirs to see, but to put it in a, in a way that they can easily access it and then engage in this process. Another issue that you're addressing in legislation this year is the governor's discretionary fund. What's in your bill this year? It requires the Department of Information Technologies and the uh, Department of Finance and Administration to develop, operate, and maintain a single internet website that is free, user-friendly, searchable, and accessible to the public. It would be known as the Sunshine Portal and it would host the state's financial information for the purpose of governmental transparency and accountability to the taxpayers. Simple as that. And unfortunately, we're looking back now uh, after eight, seven years, eight years, and uh, I would argue that, that we have not complied with the law. And over time, we passed other legislation requiring other things to be in the portal, information about education, uh, contracts, uh, and some really good useful information. And a lot of that hasn't gotten into the portal. And some of it's in there in a way that is not easy to find or understand. So. That's what we're trying to do here is to create a situation where we're doing a compliance audit of those state agencies to see if they are compliant with, with transparency uh, re requirements and see if it's getting into the portal and then requiring a report every year so that we as policymakers can see how well we're doing. And if we're not doing very well, then we know who to call up before a committee and, and hold their feet to the fire. Our state has a multi-billion dollar budget. I can imagine some folks saying, it's only seventy to ninety thousand dollars. Why does this matter? It's unfortunate, and it, it it just breaks my heart that you know we set this thing up, and we would have hoped that you know government governors with their their state agencies and cabinet secretaries would embrace this opportunity, and over time, as technology allowed, more information would flow into the portal. Uh, a lot of that could go in there in in real time and be useful for the public. Um, but that hasn't happened. So now we're sitting here thinking, though, well, let's do an audit. Let's just find out, top to bottom, where this thing is deficient, agency by agency, and then take that information and begin to decide what we're going to do. I mean, are, we, are there issues with underfunding where they cannot comply? Uh, is it an issue of uh, certain administrations preferring some of this information not being available to the public? But once we have that compliance audit, then we can really begin to go in there and selectively, uh, hopefully, uh, call attention to the deficiencies that exist. Senator Steinborn, Senator Rue has sponsored a bill to audit the governor's contingency fund. Do you support that legislation? Uh, the point is, it's not, it's not about her. It's that, again, these are public funds, and they should be accountable. And you know, certainly a governor's office needs some contingency funds to do what they do, but at the same time, uh, like all public funds we expend, it should be, they should, you know, be open to scrutiny and face that scrutiny of the decisions that they're making and how they're spending it. So I, I, I love the bill and I support it. You sponsored transparency bills in the past. Why is this an important issue for you? 
Well, first of all, taxpayers deserve to know exactly what funds their government, the mechanics of influences that influence government and influence outcomes. I just feel like transparency equals performance. The greater transparency we have and disclosure we have, then the more citizens can A, participate, but B, hold their government accountable, both of which increase the performance of government. I think when you put things um, into the shadows and you shield that information, then I think it encourages um, bad decisions, malfeasance, and, and, and you limit the, the citizens' right to be able to know what's going on and participate. So I just, I think full disclosure, shine a light in every corner of government. That's how I feel. New Mexico in Focus will continue to follow transparency and government accountability issues throughout the year for real. Now, have a tip to share with us about state government? Call our new hotline. That's 505-336-0520. Our line of opinion panelists this week are Andy Lyman, reporter for the NM Political Report, Sophie Martin, she's an attorney and one of our regulars, Serge Martinez, he's a professor at the UNM School of Law, and Giovanna Rossi, president of Collective Action Strategies, LLC, and producer host of the Well Woman Show, available on iTunes. Now, Andy, let me start with you. We just heard from Senators Rue and Steinborn, and Senator Rue also introduced a bill uh, this year uh, to bring the governor's contingency fund in line with other public funds that require a little more reporting, a little more transparency. It was sort of an up and down deal, got a little action right at the end of the session here. What was your sense of that one? That, that had some support, but it just really just sort of knocked around a little bit. Yeah, well, he also tried the same thing last year. Right. Um, and you see that a lot with legislation where mm -hmm. uh, it takes a couple of years to fine tune things. Um, I think that there's a lot of support there because it's not questioning that she has a fund right. or what she uses it for. We just want to, we the public want to see mm -hmm. exactly how it's spent. I mean, mm -hmm. we know that she spends a certain amount and we can usually kind of see some of that, but um, I think that most people, it's, it seems common sense to a lot of lawmakers that we should just see the line items of what she spends money on, mm -hmm. or, or future governors, I that's should right. say. Yeah. That's, that's a good point, since it's gonna come online right. after, she's, after she's out of office. I wanna ask us if everybody wanna start with you again though, Andy. Uh, you were with us on Wednesday for one of our Facebook Live uh, noon uh, broadcasts. We talked a lot of, you and Sarah talked about the session in general, I just want to get your sense of it after the, it's been a lot of talk about this was the love in sort of, <laughs> for some reason, everybody just sort of got along. But what was your sense of, now that it's all said and done, what was your sense of it at, now that we're concluded? Uh, I think part of it had to do with the fact that we have money now. Right. Uh, the past couple sessions was, there were arguments over who gets cut, who gets most cut. And this time it's the, the arguments are who gets the most money, right. who gets less money. Um, it's also the governor's last last year in office. Uh, I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, but yeah, I think overall people were just trying to get through the budget session and kind of get things squared away. Mm -hmm. It was uncommonly quiet up there, Serge. The times I went up there was just almost eerie sometimes. Mm -hmm. and a lot of what Andy's mentioning, folks are just ready to move on in a lot of situations. But your sense of the session, we got a budget certainly, we'll talk about that in here in a quick second, but your, your overall sense of what we did or did not do this year. I, I mean, you know, I'm no, not an expert in these matters, but mm -hmm. my sense of it from being up there and talking to folks is a whole lot of, well, mm -hmm. let's just get things positioned for next year. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, um, you know, this is a waiting game and we're gonna just deal with the budget this year, but all the important things are gonna happen next year. I've heard many times, next session is gonna be super critical, super critical. Right. And yeah. I think, you know, um, if people are looking towards 2019, then that helps for make a quiet session this year. That's right. And mm -hmm. a long year of waiting for the action to happen. That's right. So Vic, it has to be said, you know, on the House side, we have elections coming up. That's mm -hmm. impactful on these things as well. Nobody wants to really sort of hang their neck out there in a lot of different ways. But your sense of it is as in the overall, what did we do right or wrong well, up there? Well, I would, I would agree that there's a lot of like, let's wait. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of conversations about, you know what, this governor is not going to sign right. certain bills. And so, you know, let's, let's not um, get our hopes up about those things. Mm -hmm. The anticipation is that there may be a change mm -hmm. um, in party in the governor's house. The other thing that happened this year for the first time, and this is of course tied to um, a national movement mm -hmm. is that the entire legislature got sexual harassment training and it will be interesting to see, right. you know, we've had a couple of um, fairly high profile accusations here in New Mexico against legislators and other people associated with the legislature and um, it'll be interesting to see whether there is real impact from that, that training, whether they can maintain 
um, a conversation about the importance of um, mm -hmm. of that that issue. That's a good point, mm -hmm. Giovanna. Uh, let's get going on the budget as well. Your overall impressions, but let's fold in the idea that we had the budget pass fairly quickly, fairly easily through the House, certainly. But then we had a little bit of a turnaround where the governor wanted some more money and m more things for law enforcement. Our local DA got some more money for his office. Your sense of that in the budget, are we, are we as Andy mentioned, we had a little bit of money to work with. Were we sober with our choices? Were we reckless? What was, what was your mm -hmm. sense of it? Um, so I haven't looked thoroughly at all of what's in the budget, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we did have some extra money. We were able to do some important things like you know, infrastructure, roads, teachers, right. um, police officers, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I think everybody expected that mm -hmm. you know, because we had this, this little bit of extra money. Um, we uh, you know, didn't get to everything. I think I was pleased to see money in there for um, emergency services for human trafficking, which All right. was, is, is important sure. for the state. Um, so there were some interesting things that, that were pulled in and um, mm -hmm. I think you know, my overall sense, of course, of the legislative session is that it's a, um, it's like going to summer camp, you know, like everybody goes up there, you don't really know what happens. Right. There's a lot of sort of vague <laughs> stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Until the very end. Yeah, until, yeah. Until, until it's very, almost time to go home, right. just like summer camp, right? Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, I think the transparency mm -hmm. uh, issues were interesting this session and um, mm -hmm. I agree with the other panelists I think people were getting ready for for next year right. really really lining but I do want to say Please. that um, I think some of the everybody getting along I, I mean we saw a legislative session with the most women in leadership positions um, ever mm -hmm. so we've got you know Senator Mimi Stewart the new majority whip um, right. and all and a lot of you know a woman chair of uh, House uh, Appropriations, so, right. um, and women tend to have a more collaborative style of leadership, so I can't help but, you know, put those two things together. Right. That's a reasonable assessment, e even knowing those personalities, that's that's their M.O. Mimi has good at getting people together on stuff like that. Andy, going back, you started us off on budget, just want to kind of tie that down a little bit. We had some other things. We have money for a brine well collapse in Carlsbad. We've got $10 million for the spaceport to have a new hangar. There's a lot of little individual things in there that have been waiting, but there wasn't, nothing was terribly controversial when I really think about it, was it? Maybe the spaceport sort of got controversial, but not really awful. I mean, we saw some, some a little bit of contention uh, as far as funding uh, the D DA's office in Albuquerque. Right. Um, and, and increased funding there and how much increased, but mm -hmm. I think overall, I, I, like I said before, when it's, we have money, just where does it go? I think ultimately people, that are happy that they got some money instead of getting cuts right. this year. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I think overall everyone was pretty happy with it. Interesting uh, other development that made the news a bunch and certainly in your publication was the early childhood funding bill. You know, big three hour debate on the House floor, Mo Maestas really leading the charge. Then it went to the Senate and a certain committee in the Senate, what happened there? It, it's it's almost like you can set your watch to it. Right. Um, uh, John Arthur Smith chairs the Senate Finance Committee and he has been, I mean, not not extra vocal, but he's he's very clear that he's not in favor of of tapping that fund for this. Not that he's against funding that, but he just says it shouldn't come from there. So mm -hmm. it, that's just where it dies every year. That's right. Yeah. Surge had disappointed a lot of people. A lot of folks mm -hmm. felt after that uh, it passed the House there was some momentum, right. and this was going to be something that really got us going in that direction. It didn't happen, and the proponents have vowed to keep on fighting. But your sense of it, it was. You know, folks were just ready to get on with it and, and go there. Yeah, I mean, and I think it is you know, penny wise, pound foolish to keep having the same conversation about, right. you know, let's not d draw down the permanent fund. Well, if we're using it in an investment that we know is going to pay off, mm -hmm. that's actually why we, you know, a good time to spend your savings. Sure. Mm -hmm. A good way to use it. And sure. um, how many, however many times we have this conversation, I, we're going to have the same question, right? Mm -hmm. And I am. Um, kind of getting weary of it, but I imagine at some point the logic of investing in the future will actually carry right. the day. Right. You know, Sophie, John Arthur Smith wouldn't be alone in this thought, though. He's got a lot of support that that just, it's just not the right way to approach this. Is there another angle of attack here that these folks could possibly come up with? Well, I mean, in, in, mm -hmm. in this legislature with this governor, you know, one of the advantages of, um, of looking at uh, 
constitutional amendments is mm -hmm. that is that you do get to run around some of the personalities that are in place. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this sort of thing in other states is it's often sort of a, a hail mary. Let's see what we can get done because mm -hmm. it's very popular, mm -hmm. but it's just not getting through. Um, and we're just we're still just not getting through the legislature on it. So right. I, yeah, I'm not. Um, maybe this is another 2019 issue. We'll see. Right. We'll see with how how the votes go there. You know, one of the things that I think is worth noting about the the budget we talk about how it's an improvement, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But we're really still not back up to pre-recession dollars, and so mm -hmm. you know these these um, pay increases that we're seeing for state employees, for mm -hmm. corrections officers, for the courts, et cetera. Um, this doesn't really put state employees back on the path that they were before the recession came and before we saw the yep. big decrease in, in budget. Same with our infrastructure spending. So mm -hmm. these are very important things for us to be putting our state's money into. Um, it would be a shame if next year, the year after, everybody said, oh, well, they got you know X percent then, let's give them nothing now. It's, right. it's, we're still behind. Right, that makes sense. Again, Giovanna, Surge, Surge's point is popular out there. There's a lot of folks that are ready to, to make a bold move here because they feel like, you know, I'll give an example. Uh, in my Facebook feed, there was the story about New Mexico and our kids having one of the highest ACE scores, the adverse childhood conditions that have impact on, our, on their ability to learn and, and bring some learning capacity to the classroom. Right under that story was the early childhood education bill failing. You know what I mean? These things are tied together for a lot of folks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a difficulty. Yeah, no, it really mm -hmm. is. And I, I think that we often uh, fall into um, sort of band-aid approaches, quick right. fixes up at the session because mm -hmm. they're not there very long, you know, 30 or 60 days a year. They don't, there's no salary, you know, all these right. issues. Um, and so we end up without a really deep uh, process for for mm -hmm. really thinking these issues through. I mean, we have the interim process, but you know that's just like a few committee hearings right. here and there. That's right. Um, and so I think the early childhood um, issue, you know, falls into that. And so mm -hmm. a lot of sort of these quick fixes and not really addressing the the deeper issue and the root causes and seeing the connection between, look, if we want uh, better outcomes right. later, we have to start earlier and let's invest there. That's right. You know, so now that I think about it, there is a thought out there, though, you know, it, what needs some attention is how. I, I was just going to say that, mean, actually. Implementation. I mean, I mean right. I, ideally, I think what happens mm -hmm. is that the executive comes forward and says, here is this, um, you know, fully fleshed plan for how we would execute, how we would use the money. That's right. Um, and you know we would like to partner with the legislature and make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's not happening in this in in this uh, administration. Mm -hmm. Is there the potential that it could happen in the future? I don't see why not. Right. You know, Andy. You, if you think about it, we have a new governor coming in. We don't know which side of the aisle. Certainly, if this thought is going to continue, John Arthur Smith's not going to be there forever. He's been obviously a, a, a warhorse forever at to this point. But things do change, and it's almost when you th think about cockfighting. That bill took 16 years to get over the that's finish right. line. You know what I mean? It almost seems bizarre when you think back on that, but that's how our system works. So folks maybe shouldn't give up on this if they're I mean, I proponents of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely would say never say never, but mm -hmm. uh, the important thing to remember is no matter who gets the, the uh, who wins the governor's office this year, the Senate's not up for re-election this mm -hmm. year. So we're, uh, that committee, and, it, and I don't mean to say that it's just John Arthur Smith right. doing it. It's he's got support he in that alone. he's That's got right. a, he's got support in that committee, but that committee is not going to change, barring some people you know bowing out from the Senate this year. But um, so it's at least for the next uh, I don't know immediate future, it's probably going to get hung mm -hmm. up there unless somebody can negotiate with him and, and change his mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think Sophie makes a good point. If we if we have a better sense of how this money would be used, who benefits, how long it would take, you know, th maybe that changes the argument. A teeny tiny bit, you never know. Now, in just a moment, we'll talk about the latest news on the UNM Athletics Department.